What's everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna be going over who is better, book or sledge. Let's get into the video. So in this video, I'm going to structure it on a point-based system based off of the values that I think are valuable enough for a point. The way this is going to work is we're going to go over sledge, then we're going to go over book, and whoever racks up the most points consistently is going to win based off of the experience that I have with both of the operators. Now, the first part of the video is going to be loadout. Going over sledge's loadout first, let's take a look. First of all, not including the primary ability, he has the option between the SAS shotgun or the L8 rifle. Now, the L8 rifle is commonly considered to be the most beginner friendly gun in the entire game because it has almost no recoil, good damage, a 1.5 time scope, and it's all around just an easy to use gun if you want to get into shooting guns in Siege. One of the best guns on attack just because of the ease of use, and then a shotgun being the second best shotgun in the entire game. He of course then has the P22 handgun that comes on every other SAS operator in the entire game, which is a pretty solid handgun. 50 damage, 15 bullets with little to no recoil, but most importantly, he has frag grenades. There are only four operators in the entire game that have frag grenades, that being Sledge, Yana, Nock, and Glass. So frag grenades, if they're not already super valuable to you, are even more valued now. Not only do they have the ability to kill players, but they also have the ability to destroy bulletproof utility. This is extremely powerful. The mark of a good solo queue operator is if they bring information or if they have destructibility. Now, Sledge's entire kit is built around destructibility, so him having frag grenades just fits naturally and it plays well with his vertical playstyle that I'll talk about later. Next, we go into Buck's loadout. Now, Buck also has a pretty good assault rifle. In my book, I think it is a little bit worse than Sledge's rifle. For certain amount of reasons. One, it does have better fire rate, but it has more recoil. It does have a 1.5 time scope, but so does Sledge, and it also does less damage than Sledge's AR, making this AR a net worse than Sledge's AR. But on the upside, he has a Dawn 6 for that destructibility. Now, Sledge has frag grenades for destructibility, so if we're talking about who has more, Sledge definitely wins in that category. And then he has flash grenades or hard breaching charges for his secondary utility, which have their uses and are pretty good, but are nowhere near comparable, again, to frag grenades or even EMP grenades because Sledge has those too, for that matter. So if I had to give this category to anybody, I would definitely give one point to Sledge for the loadout. Next, I'm going to go over each operator's primary utility, starting with Sledge. Sledge has a sledgehammer. It's in his name, pretty easy to understand. This thing is good at destroying anything that's bulletproof, and it's also good for playing vertically and destroying soft destruction as well. So most people play him as a means to destroy castles or to play vertically. This is all very good with Sledge because he does it easily, and he does it very, very quickly. Now, unlike Buck, Sledge's ability is able to destroy bulletproof utility which is something that I previously mentioned being very important, especially for a solo queue operator in ranked. That means even if he didn't bring his frag grenades, he could still get the deployable shields, he could still get the castles, he could still get the bulletproof cams, and many other things. Now going over Buck's utility, it's just an underbarrel shotgun. The underbarrel shotgun has more versatility with what it can do, but it is limited in some other respects compared to Sledge's sledgehammer. Let's go over the differences. Well, first of all, Buck has one thing on Sledge, and that it's a ranged gadget compared to Sledge being a physical gadget that is melee distance. That means that he can play vertically below sights. Sledge cannot do this. Buck can shoot above him, meaning that he can play below sights vertically through the floor. Sledge, on the other hand, can't do this because a sledgehammer won't reach the ceiling that you're trying to reach below the site you're trying to play vertically from, so it's very hard for Sledge to do this, unless there is something that he can stand on to be able to do this, but even then, that's only going to be so limiting and it's only going to get you so far. Buck is also able to go through multiple floors due to this range, so if you're playing two floors above the site, you can shoot vertically once below you and shoot vertically a few times the floor below that, and now you have a multi-floor angle with vertical through the map, which is super, super cool. The under-barrel shotgun, mostly unlike the Sledge hammer that comes on sledge can also be used for kills because again it's a shotgun if you get in those close quarter combat situations you don't have to rely on the ar the ar is good but it's a lot more reliable to have a shotgun close range than it would be to have any sort of automatic weapon so as you can see they both have their ups and downs now if we're talking about in a solo queue environment which are you going to use more and more often are you going to use the versatility and the range on buck's gun or are you going to use a sledgehammer the answer is a sledgehammer you are going to find more times than not that a sledgehammer hammer is more applicable to what you're doing than Buck's gun would be. Now, again, Buck does have some upsides that Sledge doesn't, but those upsides are only going to come to very niche situations. The first example being that you can Buck below a site. That only works if the site is above. What about sites that are below? Sledge can do that, and he can do it a lot faster and more efficient because the Sledgehammer is a lot faster than shooting bullets. But Buck can also do multi-floor vert, and Sledge can't. Well, that is true, but it only is true for maps that have three floors, which 
is not a lot of the maps. And then also you might be saying, well, his shotgun is good for close quarters engagements. Well, if that's the case, then if it's really that important to you, you can just use Sledge's shotgun. Or the fact that his AR itself without the shotgun has a 1.5 should be enough. And then we compare that to Sledge's gadget, which is applicable to every single round, except for maybe playing below the site, which then you could pick Buck for. But again, that's a very niche situation. You're always going to need hard destructibility, which Buck does not provide other than his gone six. You're always going to need to destroy soft destruction at some point, which Sledge is unfortunately more efficient at. So if we're talking about pure primary ability, Sledge easily is more applicable to more solo queue environments. So I have to give the point to Sledge here. Now, one thing that I think should be an entire point on its own to Buck's credit is the versatility and the range that comes on having a range gadget. Like I said, it is pretty niche that this will happen, but it's a huge upside to Buck that will make you pick Buck over Sledge in certain situations. So I think that it's at least worth noting. Not only this, but if you're talking from a pure vertical standpoint, you can use Buck as many times as you can use Sledge, and Buck is just more versatile. So you could argue in the versatility category that Buck definitely is better. He also has hard reaching charges, meaning that he can get hatches and he can play vertically at the exact same time to where you don't have to have two operators to do that. Like you don't need a Habana or anybody with hard reaching charges and a Buck to be able to get vert. You can do it all as one person, which is super powerful in a solo queue environment where your teammates may not be coordinated, may not have comms, or may not just play with you and use utility. So if we're talking about just playing vertically and we're talking about the versatility that comes with it, I think I have to give a point to Buck here. The next thing that I'm going to go over is ease of play style. So which one is just more easy to play? Well, let's go over it. First of all, Sledge has a sledgehammer. Learning his ability is very easy, but mastering it is a bit more difficult. See, it's easy to sludge the ground beneath you and play vertically, but it's not easy to stay living when you do it. The reason this being is whenever you sludge a hole, a defender is just going to look up at you and shoot you. So as Sledge, you need to learn to make a bunch of holes at once and then peek the holes rather than peeking the holes after you make them. And you also need to be good at dodging nitro cells. So there is a bit, even if it's just a little, a bit of a skill ceiling that comes on playing Sledge, even though it's so newer player friendly. With Buck, this isn't really the case. If you know how to play vertically with Sledge, then you know how to play vertically with Buck. But Buck is a little bit safer because he's out of range, meaning you can open vertical sight lines while being pretty far away to where they can't shoot you and they can't nitro you. And you don't have to worry about playing super efficiently or getting punished for playing vertically just because of the operator that you're playing. Now, if we go over some other things like the loadout again, I think Sledge is easier. He has a much easier gun to use. Not only is it easy, but it's even better than Buck's gun, which means it's easier to get kills with, but also he has frag grenades, which are very easy to get kills with and to get bulletproof destruction on the way. Also playing Sledge allows you to destroy more bulletproof utility, not only because of his frag grenades, but because of his sledgehammer. So he is a bit easier in that aspect. So if I had to give a point to an operator for how easy they are, I think I'd have to give the point to Sledge. Sledge is by far easier, especially for a newer player coming into the game. He's a very reliable operator. You can't really go wrong when you play him. He's always going to be good. And he's arguably the most newer player friendly operator in the entire game. Operators that are newer player friendly are by definition easy. So if we're talking about easiness, you can't really get more easy than Sledge, to be completely honest. So I do have to give the point to Sledge. But as you may know, easy doesn't always mean good. As we can tell by the case of Rook, Rook is a pretty easy operator to play. You just put down a gadget and get kills with the 2x scope, but he's not essentially a good operator. Does he have a super high win rate? Sure. But that's not because his utility is good. That's because people play him in a certain way. This is a very complicated subject to go into, but if we're talking about who's more impactful, we're talking about who's objectively better, this is a pretty complicated answer. So I'm going to give you an answer based off of my experience, and then I'm going to give you an answer based off of the points that we just racked up to give you a final answer of who's better. We're almost done, so stick around to the end of the video. I think if you're new starting out to the game, Sledge is definitely better. Look at the points we just racked up, but also think about how easy he is. Operators that are easy are genuinely just going to be better operators. Take a look at Yana, take a look at Rook, two of the highest win percentage operators in the entire game, but two of the easiest operators in the entire game. That's not a coincidence. There's literally a direct correlation between how easy an operator is and how good they will be. Now those statistics specifically are emerald and above for PC. So that also means that easy operators are still good in the higher ranks. So if you want to talk about who's better in what rank, Sledge objectively is better in every single rank. But there are opportunities where Buck can be better. So when we're talking about deciding about who is a better operator, we have to take into account all factors. Now does that mean that I'm going to give you the answer of neither of them are better, they're just one is better in this situation and one is better in this situation? Not at all. There is one operator that is better in other situations more than the other operator who was only better in some situations. And if you couldn't tell by where I've been going with this and you couldn't tell by the point system, the operator is Sledge. Out of Buck and Sledge, Sledge is the better operator. Not only did I give you a point system to back this up, but objectively, he's easier 
and more impactful because of the frag grenades and because of just his sledgehammer. It's just more impactful. Now, are there certain situations where Buck can be better? Absolutely. If the site's above you, if you're playing multi-level vert like on maps like Cafe or Bank, then sure, Buck can be better and has the potential to be better. But Sledge can be better and has the potential to be better than Buck in more scenarios, meaning that he is objectively a better operator. And even if he wasn't applicable to more scenarios than Buck, he's still objectively better because of the utility it provides, right? The destruction, soft destruction, they both have it, but his is faster and he has more of it. He also has frag grenades for the bulletproof destruction and his sledgehammer provides a lot of bulletproof destruction. So if that wasn't enough, I hope you realize why Sledge is better. And that is my final answer for this video. If you like this video, comment down below which two operators you want to see me compare next. I've done a bunch of comparison videos lately, so I hope you like them. Sub my channel down below. My name is Alcan, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.